And I introduce Carlos Guzman. Good morning, everyone. Um, with the international ufology community, there are few cases from Mexico. That is the reason it is a privilege for me to speak today about Mexican ufology. I will present some of the most significant cases that have been registered in my country. At the same time, I would like to thank Mr. Walter Andrews for having me invite me to such a prestigious symposium. Could you please uh, down the light? In Mexico, there has been a great number of unique cases in the world. Unfortunately, due to the reduced number of serious Mexican researches on the theme of the UFOs and the lack of diffusion that these cases have, have they are rarely known. Mexico has always been a country with many attractive tourist spots for people from all over the world, especially for Americans, since it's so close to the United States. Mexico is a vast country with almost two million square miles. As far as land is concerned, it's one of the three largest countries in Latin America. At present, there are 93.7 million inhabitants 66% live in urban areas, and 34% live in the rural. It's not border is with the United States, to the east with the Gulf of Mexico, to the west with the Pacific Ocean, and to the southeast with Guatemala, Belize, and the Caribbean. Mexico is a country with a lot of history, culture, and folklore. It is a country where the magic and mystery come from its origin as a nation. There have been more archaeological discoveries in Mexico than anywhere else in America, much on the same scale of magnitude as Egypt. The development of my ancestors and the knowledge of the universe was much more developed than the Europeans in the 14th century. As an example, the perfect astronomical orientation of the pyramids are precise where the equinoxial days, March 21 and September 22, are subject to the ascent from up above of the Maya god Kukulkan at sunset, between 5 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. The shadows made by the northwest corner of the platform were successfully cast along the edge of the northern stairways, forming seven isosceles tri triangles from the top downward until the plate of light and shadow created what appeared to be the body of an enormous serpent descending the pyramid. The last shadowy undulation stopped at the neck of the huge stone reptile head that rests on the ground at the base of the stairs. This light show can be appreciated at the pyramid of Kukulkan in the archaeological site of Chichen Itza in the state of Yucatan, just west of Cancun. The Mayas used geometry to build their pyramids and ceremonial centers, mostly enigmatic and undeciphered. The Aztec calendar of the Sun Stone defines with sheer precision days, month, solstice, equinox, etc. This masterpiece represents an astronomical calendar where the knowledge of the Aztecs concentrated the greatness of its people. Anyway, this will take a long time to present the vastness of the Aztecs, Mayas, Olmecas, archaeoastronomy, and other culture that lived in Mexico during its origin. So in order to continue, I shall present a brief chronology of the most important event that has taken place concerning UFOs and Fortean's event in my country. The majority of the information that I am about to present is unpublished. Early UFO report. Within ufology, many authors refer to such as the case of Jack Bali in his book, in Passport to Magonia, that there is a bridge 
between two unexplainable set of manifestations, the one that's come up from tradition, myth, stories, and folklore, and the most recent cases of the UFO phenomena. The current events are continuous through the history of mankind. I shall mention a few curious events that were taken from some old texts of historians, tales, writers, and journalists from all Mexico as events that caught my attention and were registered with the vocabulary used then such as light, firebolt, comet, giant star, moon, bright crosses. Therefore, all these definitions fit perfectly under the classification of the UFO phenomenon. A strange phenomenon in the Hispanic sky. It is a very important fact that during the American discovery by Christopher Columbus, the first report of what can be classified as UFO has been compiled from the Spanish historian Salvador de Maradiaga, Volume 1, The Hispanic Cycle. He said, being two or three days from reaching America short, the three discovery caravel, two hours before midnight, Columbus saw a light. He called Pedro Gutierrez and asked him to, to, to look. Pedro did, and he saw it. As you can see, Columbus wanted to make sure that he was not hallucinating. A writer and historian from Tlaxcala, a state in Mexico, wrote between 1576 and 1595 Tlaxcala history. In book two, chapter one, he mentioned the prodigies that were seen in Mexico and Tlaxcala before the arrival of the Spanish. These prodigies talk about simple events such as sightings of a comet and another, and another amazing event that don't have an explanation. Out of those prodigies, the most significant is the tale of the four prodigy, which state, during the day and the sun shining, comet came out of the sky from the west in set of three toward the east, with such force and violence that they were casting red hot coal or a spark on their pan to the east. The natives from back then thought that the god has come down from the heavens. In 1517, the sailor from an expedition by Juan de Grijalva witnessed a very strange phenomenon, the sighting of a shiny object. The event was written in Salvador Maria de Aga work, the Hispanic cycle, as follows. Today, in the late afternoon, we saw a big miracle, which was that a star appeared above our ship after sunset and it broke up leaving a trail of spark that lasted for more than three hours. It ended up resting over Pueblo Grande. UFO during the colonial era. One of the most outstanding events in ufology is the case of teletransportation. In Mexico, two important events have been registered. The first one happened in 1593, and the second in 1968. I will talk about the first that happened in October 25, 1593. The event is registered in the work of Luis González Obregón, the street of Mexico. I shall tell the story just the way that it was written. We can be talking about the soul from another planet, but instead of a mysterious character that appeared one morning in Mexico main plaza, somewhere around of the 16th century. In Mexico Main Plaza, the news got about the death of Gomez Perez, a governor at that time, and at the same day of the event, even though we didn't know and how. The story said that on the morning of October 25, 1593, a soldier appeared in the main square wearing a uniform from the Philippines, and that the soldier, with his rifle on his shoulder, questioned whoever happened to pass by the aforementioned and sacramental who live. Furthermore, the story said that the night before he was on guard in the sentry box of the wall that protects the city of Manila, and that without his knowledge, he found himself in the capital of the new Spain. The event seemed so exceptional and wonderful that the court of the Inquisition took care of the matter, and after serious investigation and the process, condemned the soldier that marvelously appeared back to Manila, but slowly 
and on the way to Acapulco without the intervention of Lucifer the spirit who was blamed for the miracle of the first journey, so sudden and unexpected. The Philippine soldier was aware of the governor's death. Many months later, the soldier still remains prisoner until a galleon from the Philippines brought news that the very same day that the soldier appeared in Mexico City, the governor from the Philippines has passed away. August 14, 1610, the image of Our Lady from Asuncion made of solid gold that can be honored in the cathedral in Mexico City made its debut on the eve of the celebration of the holiness. On its premiere, there was a resplendent palm in the, in the shape of half a moon at its feet up in the sky, what brought about a legal investigation under the command of Archbishop Garcia Huerta. In the 19th century, the strange phenomena continues. On October 2nd, 1847, the morning sun covered by a black cloud that covered its shine, leaving the town surrounded in wandering shadows that gave it an aspect of sadness. Three hours before the sun reached high noon, all of Ocotlands in Guadalajara inhabitants felt the earth's tremor caused by a strong vibrating earthquake that lasted for five minutes. The old parochial temple a strong and solid construction crumbled loudly, burning some people praying at that time. The previous transcription is recorded in Ocotland Prodigy Book, Testimonies Gathered and Published in 1945 by the Reverend Margarita Ortega. More than 60 people died during, during the earthquake, and most of this town was destroyed. October 3rd, 1847. The following day, in the same town, a miracle happened. Ocular witnesses' testimonies of what happened, a horrible revolution of clouds in the horizon. And at the northeast of the town, two light clouds remained breaking up slowly. In the center of the cloud, a great blue cross appeared, and the perfect image of the God kneeled down on it. Ocotlan Mayor Antonio Jimenez a statement right to the state of Jalisco authorities. Today, in the afternoon, Excellency, 24 hours after the unfortunate event, talking about the earthquake that destroyed the town, the perfect image of God, our Lord crucified, made up by a cloud like shiny comet, had been sighted in the Northwest. The event lasted half an hour, time in which more than 1,500 people knelt down in the plaza. There are dozens of testimonies that were certified in front of the ecclesiastical authorities from back then, having to do with this happening, even though some people only saw a white cross in the sky. The disappearance of the cross took place when a cloud started to cover it until it disappears covered by the cloud. Here we find again some appearances that are linked to the religious public demonstration and that the celestial signs are mixed with the UFO causistic. 